Hello everybody out there in YouTube land, this is your t-shirted historian with another unboxing video. And I'm really kind of excited about this one. This is for a game I know nothing about. I have... I'm, I'm virtually buying this one, I bought this one. Sight Unseen. So I... I haven't looked at the PDF. I don't know about the mechanics. All I know is it's a genre that I am very, very excited and interested in, which is, of course, cyberpunk. The game is called Identico, and uh, it is supposed to be, according to the website, a cyberpunk-themed tabletop RPG set in and around the megacities that dot the landscape of Earth 2099. Corporations have created the new ruling class, cleverly convincing citizens to trade information and freedom for comfort and security. They use this to exploit and secretly manipulate the lives of all humankind. But you know this, Fringer. You're someone who lives life on the edges of society. You know their corruption, you see their methods, and you know how to stop them. So this is a 237-page core rulebook that I ordered. And, uh, well, like I said, I'm, I'm kind of excited about it. I haven't spoken to the creator. I know nothing about them. Uh, all I know is the little I've seen in the artwork from the game and the pitch. So you guys are learning about it as much as I am through the unboxing. And keep in mind, this is not an actual review of the game itself as far as the mechanics or how it plays or anything. This is me actually showing you what you get when you get it from the uh, from the seller how it comes packaged and what the actual you know print book looks like uh, and the contents and how easy it is to read that sort of thing and if I do happen to spot some mechanics or something interesting along the way I'll definitely note them but uh, yeah this is not intended to be a review of the game system itself Here we go. Yeah, I peeled the uh, label off. Uh, you know, hey, don't feel like being docs today. And I did have to kind of pre-open this a little bit. I have not actually looked at the book. So we're, we're still unboxing. But the main reason I did that is because this wrapper is so tightly conforming to the book itself that uh, unless you wanted to see a 50-year-old guy struggle with pulling a book out of the package, um, yeah, I, I didn't think that would be very conducive. But uh, yeah, needless to say, it does come very tightly bundled into this package. And there, let's get that off. And as you can see, it, it is sealed. I have not opened this, so I don't know. I don't know what it looks like on the inside. I know it's 237 pages, so there's the finger test for you. But that's a sweet looking cover. Let's get this baby open, shall we? Yeah, if it's Cyberpunk, man, you know I'm going to check it out in fact i got my johnny silverhand t-shirt on right now that's right will this game replace cities without numbers for me hmm bold bold i don't know don't know you know me the sacred crawford shelf All 
All right. So it's unpackaged. Um, got a little dented here in shipping. I'm not gonna quibble about that. I mean, you know, stuff gets dropped. It happens. You know, the postal service people. I know they do their best, but uh, things happen. Stuff gets thrown around. So let's crack this book open, and uh, I'm gonna have to resist the urge to. Uh, Pick it up and smell it, because uh, I love new book smell. Ooh, you hear that crack? Yeah. Look at that. Oof. All right, man, that's a... That is some thick cardstock, almost. Yeah, what is that? How many pages is this? Well, it's just one thick page, and then another... Blank page of some rain. I'm not sure why that was done, but uh... so here we are. Is our creators Sean Rourke and Alex Wood, and uh, I believe you can find them up on uh, Twitter. That's how I found them, kind of by accident. But uh, as soon as I saw this, I, I said, "Man, I gotta." Check it out. Pretty simple here. All right, right away. Laid out nice and clean. A little bit of side artwork. Looks good. Oh, chapter one. This art's pretty nice. What is a role-playing game? Yeah, we always gotta have these. And, um, we have their history of their world, a timeline. Very cool. I'll be honest, I don't think uh, there are many cyberpunk games out there that are really gonna be able to compare to the depth and complexity and the richness of cyberpunk itself, you know, by Mark, by Mike Pondsmith, uh, just because it's had so many iterations and so many years to develop its lore, and so many writers that contributed to it. But for a couple of guys releasing their first book, um, you know, I have hopes. we talk about all the different uh, all the different innovations and things and what exists we have our cities with population sizes you know what I don't see I don't see my city on here or anything key metroplexes yeah there's no uh, I could maybe Texas didn't make it. I don't know. I mean, like, Santa Fe is the closest thing to it. Or is it further along here? Oh, Jefferson City. Hey. Birmingham. Wow. Did Texas just get wiped off the map or something? The wastes. The wild frontier. The scar. 20 nuclear impact zones that form... North-South line through the heart of America, essentially bifurcating the country. Ah. The scar stretches from just inside the former state of North Dakota to the border with the Republic of Texas. Okay, so Texas is its own thing. Which, uh, I think we actually still are a republic. It's talking about all the different history type things. Chip, the centralized human identity program. Life in space, node war, reformation of America. Ah, here's the world. With UK, Japan, and other metroplexes. The age of indifference, an honest history of the modern world. 
I like stuff kind of like this because it uh, it does kind of help give you some insight and some background into the world that they're trying to create. Decent art. I like the way this is laid out already. Yep, here's our map of the world as it currently exists. And here we are, Chapter 2, creating a character right away. Pretty cut and dried. Background modifiers, class, attributes, stamina, strength, agility, intelligence, determination, charisma. Six stats. Um, you roll four die six per attribute six times and assign them where they go. Okay. So. Stats are anywhere from, what, 4 to 24? So it is not a 3 die 6 system. It is not a OSR product. Earth classes. Wow, kind of sexy. I kind of like that. The Merc class. When finesse really isn't your style. I like that. The Rover. They fire, conflict ends. <laughs> the hacker, magic.exe, has stopped responding. <laughs> the operative, don't let the suit fool you. Gutter punk. Damned man, up to people, screw everything else. Greaser, creation, optimization, destruction, enough said. Leo, you know there are still laws, right? So, Leo, yeah, law enforcement officer. Outrider. Finding something out of nothing. So those are your classes. Here's the how to play section. So we have the dice that are used. We have time tracking, combat rounds. Movement, environmental effects. All right. Pretty straightforward. I like this. Here we go. Here's our lifting and carrying capacity chart. Very useful. Stealth and technology. Drugs and addiction. Lifestyle expenses and downtime activities between missions. Okay, that's good. Crafting. Creating software. I like that. So your reputation and level progression goes. So this is your level. So at zero, everybody starts at level zero. And as they go up, they start getting stuff. And you get one ability score, background-based social, additional combat proficiency, additional talents and skill points. Plus one ability score. So you do have a, a method for raising ability scores as you go up, but it's very it's very spread out, and it is a 20 level system, apparently. So there, there are parts of this game that feel familiar and parts that feel new. And I think that's a good idea. I like that. influence okay like I said I I haven't read the book I I'm not so much talking about the mechanics and things as I am just if things catch my eye you know as a game player a game designer I I'm gonna notice these things okay we have skill groups pretty well rounded up it's good and it's not too many skills Success ratings. Um, so when you use a skill, you roll a d20 and you add your skill modifier. So that's skill check is uh, skill points plus attribute modifier plus miscellaneous bonuses. Miscellaneous bonuses could be equipment, cybernetics, rover bonuses, etc. And then you look at your have a success rating scale for how difficult things are. Oh, come on, 
with me, camera. So again, a lot of this seems very familiar. So this shouldn't be too difficult to pick up if you're already, um, you know, an OSR fan or a D and D fan. And combat proficiencies. Yeah, that sounds very familiar. Ooh, man. Nice piece of art here. This, uh, the camera's not picking up all the detail, I don't think, but man, that really looks nice. I feel like I'm gushing about the artwork a little bit too much, but. I, I really do like it. Um, cyberpunk, the visual style, is very important to the game because you're when you when you're looking at medieval fantasy type stuff, uh, you already kind of have a concept in your head because there's so many medieval fantasy pseudo medieval fantasy type games out there that is very easy to you know imagine a guy in armor. Or, you know, fighting, you know, a dragon, a troll, or whatever like that. The only variation might be how they look uh, from system to system. But when you're looking at the future, you're, you're kind of having to deal with someone's imagination of what the future will look like. And not everybody's future necessarily looks the same. Because it hasn't happened yet, obviously. And this is only, you know, 2099, so this is... You know, only about 75 years down the road. <laughs> I won't be around to see it. Um, chances are the creators of this game will not be around to see it. But um, I'm curious to see how closely it mirrors the artwork. Okay, Order of Combat. The, the text is big. It's chunky. It's readable. Uh... You know, everything is highlighted, you know, really big. There's not a lot of clutter. They do have creature sizes in here from micro to XXL. So it tells you how big they are. And what you can do, we've got attack speeds. We have range attack modifiers over here on this other table. We have cybernetic modifiers, smart weapons and things. Hmm, another nice piece of arc. Art. A lot of the tables are over here on this side, and you're not seeing them from the camera. But uh, yeah, here's all the cover and thrown weapons and everything. I like that um, their thrown weapons table. I don't know if you saw this how closely, but look at that. Depending on your strength score and the object's size or weight in pounds is broken down very precisely in how far you can throw it. I like that detail. That is extremely useful uh, because, you know, people are always wanting to chunk things at other people. Not just, you know, shooting each other with guns, but I also like the comments. Ill-advised. Do you even lift? Hit the gym. Nope. Nah, brah. Nah. Ain't even gonna happen. So yeah, somebody who has a strength score of 9 to 10 can't throw a 45 to 65 pound object <laughs> very far at all. But keep in mind, you know, that, that uh, you know, if the base... The baseline of a person in this game, what uh, if it's four die six? Oh god, I was never really good at math. You have to excuse me. So uh, what? Three and three is six. Is so twelve is going to be your average person. So yeah, nine through ten, four through eight is below average. Here we go with happens uh, natural ones and natural twenties. Grappling objects bigger than you, location. I like this because this this uh, tells you a lot of the common things that will happen. 
condition track. Okay, so it tracks body locations. So you can take damage uh, in hit points, rated armor points. I'm guessing that's what AP is. I'm guessing. I, I don't actually know. Uh, it may mean something else. And it does have... It has uh, conditions as far as how, how tracked it. Okay. I like this. This is... What this is is like a combination of the new Cyberpunk Red and the old Cyberpunk 2020. Old Cyberpunk 2020 had a wound level chart where, you know, if you took uh, you know, you take like a, a minor wound, flesh wound or whatever like that, and then you got progressively worse and worse and you'd start taking more and more minuses. It didn't necessarily have hit points or didn't have hit points. Cyberpunk Red has hit points, lots of them. Um, this is kind of married the two together to where it tells you, you know, you get minus one if you get a flesh wound, you get minus three if you're considered damaged. Minus five if you're crippled, and you can see how it scales up with whatever you got hit. So, yeah, if you got hit in the leg and you took, like, you know, what, X amount of hit points of damage, it would uh, push you to these different wound thresholds. I like this. I like this. This is good. This is a little crunchy. It's not too crunchy to handle, but it is crunchy. Great looking artwork. This is the equipment charts. Logos. Always love these. And everything is rated in dollars. And they also have a commodities here. So vibro weapons. More great artwork. Gauss weaponry. Lasers. Vibro weapons. Here's our stat blocks. Or No, not yet. We don't have stat blocks yet. Got a few pistols and things and swords. Ah, here we go. Let's see, did I skip a page? I think I did. Yeah, I did. Wow. Golly. Non-nuclear imp weapons. Heavy weapons, rail guns, maker shotguns. Or shotguns and makers. Uh, wow. So a Securitech Magistar pistol is different from a Evilio Whisper pistol. And there's the damages. And the damages seem to fluctuate quite a bit. Um, but they all seem pretty chunky. I don't know what hit points look like in this system. But uh, yeah, I mean... Some of these bad boys are throwing down like 4 die 8 damage. Um, I can't imagine that's good for your health. But let's compare it to something bigger like your rifles here are throwing down 2 die 12, 3 die 10, 4 die 6, 6 die 6. Whew. Yeah. Kind of guessing these things will mess you up. Here's their cost, this is their availability. Capacity, damage types, range, damage, rate of fire, name. Yeah. I like this. Look at this. I'm only... <laughs> we're almost 30 minutes into the video. Almost. And I'm only 118 pages. It's a 273-page book. I, I guess I need to go a little faster. Huh? <laughs> Cooking a grenade... <laughs> Oh, and now we have weapon add-ons, so you can put on scopes and bipods and range finders and all this other cool stuff that you can bump up things with. And you have actual armor kits, and they give you your armor by locations. Very cool. Also gives you a maximum agility bonus, so... Again, feels very familiar. Certain types of armor limit your mobility, which is good. 
Here's all your actual weapon accessories. And we're, we're not even... This is just the weapons and armor. We're not even through all the uh, equipment yet. Oh, oop, and here we go. Cybernetics. Purchasing, crafting, classification, how they work. What category they fall into. Why is there no humanity rating? Cybernetics have become commonplace amongst the people both in and out of cities. That doesn't mean that everyone likes them. You will run into many people who will have adverse reactions to cybernetics and implants. Your GM will help craft a narrative, but expect an NPC's reaction to your physical looks to range dramatically from person to person. Some in high societies will judge you if you don't want the top of the line in cybernetics that look, feel, and act like real flesh. Others might try and hunt you and kill you because they feel like you're an abomination to nature. Be aware of this at all times. People fear what they do not control. Cybernetics can give a freedom that others do not accept. Okay. So they don't have a humanity rating, so um... I guess... I'm assuming that they have some kind of a, a system for how much cybernetics you can actually install before you can't install anymore. I just didn't see it but usually yeah humanity or constitution or something else is usually how how much cybernetic stuff you can put on but I am curious to see how the cybernetics work uh, in this it's actually not a whole lot of these I mean, there, there are there is some cybernetics here but there's not a ton of them it's not like, you know, like a Chromebook's worth or anything. And maybe that's something they plan on doing in the future is releasing some supplements with more cybernetic gear in it. I don't know. Um, it's enough to get you started. And it's definitely probably the most common type of things. Okay, here's vehicles. Streets have been hacked. Element 121. This is, this is what actually fuels your cars now, so they don't use fossil fuels anymore. Some vehicle art here. <laughs> Public travel. Life of a greaser. Driving and piloting. Oh, and yeah, your vehicles. <laughs> okay, guys, I love this. Cockpit. Damage. If you get hit in the cockpit, kiss your ass goodbye. <laughs> oh my gosh. I love this game. I haven't even played it. I haven't even read all the rules, but I already love it. Um, and here it says right here, kiss your ass goodbye. The cockpit is its own target on most vehicles. In terms of the game, the cockpit stands in for any place where the driver of the vehicle would be. Most vehicles, unless they're modded or military police issue, don't have additional armor in this area. It stands to reason that if you can take out the cockpit and subsequently the driver, you can take out the vehicle. You better hope your opponent doesn't roll a one when it counts. <laughs> that used to be a thing in Battletech. Um, obviously, if you if you rolled like a twelve, I think on the uh, roll on the uh, area hit chart, I think that was a cockpit hit or a head hit. Uh, I remember winning a fight like that in the very first round of combat. Uh, I had an AC-20 and uh, got lucky and rolled a, a head hit to 
got the other guy immediately. He was not happy. List of optional extras, gun mounts, swivels, and parts. Oh, wow. Color changing paint. I like that you can customize your vehicles almost to the extent that you can customize your character. Range and sound system. Auto drive computer. Okay, so repairing vehicles, spare parts, street racing, drones. Yeah. Drones are going to just keep happening in the future. Got quite a section on drones. Gonna try and speed this up a little bit because already 30 minutes into this video and I imagine you guys are going t-shirt really it's getting along here. So ROVs remote operated vehicles rovers so you're basically like mechs they have their own hand-to-hand -hand combat thing. Pretty cool, I like that. They got some cool looking ROVs. The stats are down here at the bottom. Wow. I love this. Oh. Beautiful. I like this art. Ha! 20 millimeter auto cannon over here on this page. Lifelike visage. Huh. That's creepy, but. So basically, they put skin on a drone so it looks like a person at a distance. Suicide bomber. Urban assault cannon. Ah, here's our whole chapter on hacking. I'm always curious to see how um, games handle hacking because um, I've never seen a lot of hacking systems where it didn't kind of like take people out of the game. Boy, grids, nodes, data clusters. That might be a little complex because now we're having to work with basic home networks and stuff. I'm going to have to read up on this. Stuff like this always makes me kind of kind of worry a little bit because when it starts getting this graphically intensive, then it's... And then following flow charts and everything, that's, that's more work for the GM to have to build nodes and stuff like that. And I, I know it's more realistic, but at the same time, it's kind of like if you don't have one ready to go ahead of time, you know, uh, you're stuck trying to improvise one really quickly or, you know, build one on the fly or worse, you're literally having to take game time building one. Um, and that can be a pain in the butt because it's like, you know, it, the difference between hacking into a major, you know, system versus, you know, breaking into like a bodega store, you know, PC or something is going to be way different. But both can happen in the middle of a game. So here's the actual personal personal area network. Gives you ideas for what people have that are connected to the, the grid and how easy they are to hack. So that's useful. Some more sweet artwork. I really gotta check out who did all the artwork for this because this is nice. Hacking terms, intrusion ratings. We're actually getting closer to the end of the book here. Metadata. And we finally get to the game master section. So 
Actor, storyteller, rolling attack, and hit location together. Ability checks. Yep, this is all good general game master advice. This is kind of different. This is a piece of artwork from the book, which seems a little incongruous to all the other art that we've seen in here. Whereas, you know, this is all black lined, uh, you know, art versus all the really heavy duty color stuff that we've seen throughout. I don't say it's bad. It's just a little, a little jarring to see something like that. And then after seeing so much rich uh, color driven so appendix A corporations and other anti or other organizations I was just looking at this person anti kathera which you know anti kathera mechanism soul systems whisper stone upgrade yourself industries <laughs> malfina dynamic design Benevolent Corporation, I'm sure they are. INS Arms, Urban Warfare Industries. We have some actual groups like uh, the 83rd Airborne, United Nations. Pacific Institute of Technology. And okay, so this was a Kickstarter. Wow. <laughs> that character sheet looks kind of intimidating. Um, because it's not laid out in a way I'm familiar with. But on looking at it, it is pretty readable and it is more or less straightforward it's just it's just laid out kind of different you know you get your skills your proficiencies your equipment what cybernetics you have your weapons your actual stats themselves and your your hit locations down here and then you have your rov over here which kind of reminds me of mech warrior a little bit and then your vehicle Okay. Brother is watching. Time to put on a show. Okay. So there we go. That is Identico, the cyberpunk role playing game. I like it. I, I I really do. I like it. I wish there was an index. I'm very big on indexes, and as a person who's always being forced to look up stuff in the middle of a game, usually because of a question from a player or a question for myself, I really like having indexes available to look stuff up with. Um, so, next edition, put in an index, guys. <laughs> But other than that, I really like the way the game, I like the way the book is laid out. Uh, I like the systems I've seen in the game. I don't know how it plays yet. I'll have to actually sit down and play test it, and run a game or two for my players and see what they think. But overall, I, I think we have something pretty good here. And, uh, and I'm going to say you probably should give it a try. And if you'd like to, uh, I will include the the website, which is chock full of good stuff uh, in the comments, or actually in the in the description box. So I hope you've enjoyed this. Um, I'm looking forward to it. I guess the next person who needs to check this out is Grim Jim, because uh, I think this is going to be up his alley as well. But until next video, y'all take care. Have a great uh, week in Geek.